boys and girls. Today we will be reading a wonderful story called Take a Picture of Me, James Van Der Zee by Andrea Loney, illustrated by Keith Mallet. Here we go. There's a camera. Looks a little different than the cameras you're used to, huh? Deep in the heart of Lenox, Massachusetts, in a white farmhouse nestled between his aunt's home and his grandparents' house, lived a boy named James Van Der Zee. James was the oldest boy of three sons and two daughters. At the Van Der Zees, the children learned about music and art and kindness too. James played the violin and piano. He also liked to paint but drawing people was hard. He could never get their expressions right. James wanted to share the beauty he saw in his heart. One day, a man, man came to the Van Der Zee home with a huge contraption called a camera. It was the only camera in Lennox. Click, boom! The man took the family's picture and left. Later, he returned with a photograph that perfectly captured everyone's smiles and their mother's sweet gaze. Now this is how you make great pictures, thought James. I want a camera. In a magazine, James found a contest where the first prize was a camera. To win, he had to sell the most sachets of ladies' perfume. After months of selling sachets, James won. He won! But... The camera came in parts and the parts didn't fit together. So James had to start over again. He weeded the neighbor's garden for a quarter a day until he saved $5. And then James was the second person in Lennox to own a camera. First, James took pictures of his family, then his classmates. Soon people from all over town were saying, take a picture of me, James Van Der Zee. At home, James turned his closet into a dark room and learned how to develop film. It wasn't easy to create photographs, but James loved his family. He loved his town and the people in it. So he always worked to make them look their best. Not far away from Lennox, the world was changing. Many black families were leaving the segregated South to start lives in a big Northern towns like New York City. James was ready for an adventure. At the age of 18, he took his camera and moved to Harlem. Woo! Compared to Lennox, Harlem was big, fast, and exciting. James had to hold on to his hat to keep his head from spinning. After working as a pianist, a waiter, and an elevator operator, James finally got a job as an assistant photographer at a portrait studio in New Jersey. Many big city customers came to have their portraits taken. James couldn't wait to take their photographs, but his boss sent him straight to the dark room. He said customers would not want their portraits taken by a black man. James did not like the way his boss took portraits. His boss shot the photographs too quickly. Sometimes the customers weren't even ready. In the dark room, James worked hard to make everyone look their best. One day, his boss left for vacation and put James in charge of the shop. James promised to take care of the business, but in his own way. Instead of rushing the customers, James talked to them. He found their natural smiles and the perfect backgrounds. James treated the customers like family. In the dark room, James made their pictures look even better. He brightened people's eyes, straightened their teeth, and fixed their hair. He saw what was special in everyone and captured each person's story on film. When James's boss returned, he found a line of customers saying, take a picture of me, James Van Der Zee. So James went back to New York and opened his very own portrait studio in Harlem, where the neighborhood was jumping with brand new music, art, books, and glamor. This cultural celebration was called the Harlem Renaissance. Just about everyone, politicians like Marcus Garvey, athletes like Joe Lewis and New York Black Yankees, and the world famous performers like Florence Mills, 
Bill Bojangles Robinson and Mamie Smith wanted fancy portraits taken by James Van Der Zee. James photographed the rich and the poor, but mostly the middle class, and this distinguished him from many other photographers. At the time, photographs of black people were also often sad and grim depictions of poor farm workers or struggling city dwellers. But when James stepped behind the camera, click, boom, everything changed. James used beautiful backgrounds, fancy props, and elegant clothing to help the people of his neighborhood look their best. In the darkroom, he fixed photos and combined images to create perfect portraits. Even James' street photography captured the pride, beauty, and joy of Harlem. People all over the world proudly displayed James' photos in their homes, in their businesses, and close to their hearts. But the world was changing again. Cameras were now smaller and cheaper. People could take their own photographs. Soon, customers stopped coming to James Van Der Zee's studios. James tried to keep working. He took passport photos, shooting tiny portraits that helped send folks on faraway adventures. Eventually, though, James had no choice but to put away his camera. Instead, he fixed up old photo photographs sent to him by people from around the world. Several years later, a visitor arrived at James's studio. The Metropolitan Museum of Art needed photographs for an exhibit on the history of Harlem. They found thousands of photos showing thousands of Harlem residents, all taken by James Van Der Zee. The exhibit was called Harlem On My Mind, and James's work was a huge hit. People said it was like walking through 40 years of the history of Harlem. The photographs showed the Harlem of families and churches, friends and clubs, neighbors and celebrities the Harlem of love, pride, and community, the Harlem that James Van Der Zee always saw in his heart. And people came to say, take a picture of me, James Van Der Zee. So James stepped behind the camera once again. Click, boom. Afterward. In 1884, John and Susan Elizabeth Van Der Zee the butler and maid for President Ulysses S. Grant left their post in New York, his New York residence to start a family. They moved to Lenox, Massachusetts, a sleepy multicultural town that became a vacation retreat for wealthy aristocrats in the summer. A year after their first child, Jenny, arrived, James Augustus Joseph Van Der Zee was born on June 29, 1886. The next year, their son Walter was born and three more children, Charles, Johnny, who died at age six, and Mary followed. James's first working camera was a four by five inch box camera operated on a stand. With supplies from the local drugstore, he developed his own pictures by following the directions that came with his first camera, the broken one. James was only a fifth grader when he became the school's photographer. He was also the unofficial town photographer and even took portraits of vacationing aristocrats. Eventually, James outgrew life in his small town. In 1904, 18-year-old James and his brother Walter decided to join their father who was working as a waiter at the Knickerbocker Trust in New York City. James took on many jobs. He played the violin and the piano with the Fletcher Henderson and John Wanamaker Orchestra. In 1911, James got a job as an assistant photographer in a portrait studio in Newark, New Jersey. The next year, he joined his sister Jenny at the Toussaint Conservatory of Art and Music where James photographed many of her young students. He honed his craft there until 1915, when James opened the Guarantee Photo Studio at 109 West 135th Street in Harlem with his new business partner, Gainella Greenlee. Then they moved to a better location, the renamed GGG Photo Studio located at 272 Lenox Avenue. James and Gainella were married for more than 50 years. From 1915 through the 1980s, James took James took pictures of family, churches, businesses, soldiers, professional organizations, performers, athletes, religious leaders, and more. Marcus Garvey's Back to Africa movement, the Universal Negro Improvement Association, hired James as the organization's official photographer. Eventually, once cameras became 
Smaller, cheaper, and easier to use, James's business declined. He went through hard times losing his home, his wife Gaynella, and even rights to his own photographs. Then in 1978, he married Donna Musseldon, and everything changed. With his new wife's encouragement and support, James regained the rights to his work, returned to his camera, and started taking pictures again. James created portraits for many celebrities, including Jean-Michael Basquet, Lou Rawlis, and Muhammad Ali. James Van Der Zee saw himself as an artist first, then a photography photographer. He was a master at transforming simple photographs into elaborate works of art. The camera was only one part of a complete set of tools he used to create portraits. First came the special lighting, clothing, backgrounds, and props. Second, James's humor and warmth helped his customers relax for the camera. Finally, after the pictures were taken, James used a couple of techniques to perfect the portraits in the darkroom. He used an etching knife and a retouching pencil to erase parts of images such as wrinkles wrinkles or draw in corrections such as straight teeth. Sometimes he even brightened the subject's eyes and smile as in the portrait below. So boys and girls you can see what the picture looked like in the beginning and then when he was done with it how nice it looked. He made her teeth look nice, he opened her eyes and he brightened it up. James also mastered the art of photo montage. This technique allowed him to take two or more pictures and then combine them into one final image. Sometimes he would show only a partial layer of an image, which would make the people in the photo seem transparent, as if they were spirits or angels. In future expectations, this picture below, James used the technique to show a newly married couple's wish to have a family. So see, boys and girls, here's the newly married couple, and he superimposed the babies on there. During his lifetime, James Van Der, Zee, Van Der Zee created thousands of portraits, took more than 75,000 photographs, and created more than 125,000 plates, negative transparencies, and prints. Each image shared an extraordinary story about the people of Harlem, the quiet beauty of their everyday lives, and the grandeur of their hopes and dreams, and most of all, their inherent dignity and pride. James passed away in 1983 at the age of 96. After the life and work of James Van Der Zee, the world has never seen Harlem in quite the same way. The end. Boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed the story and the afterword, which explained a little bit more about his life. Stay tuned to see what story we will read next. Bye-bye.